All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, we have uh, Syracuse University for this afternoon's presentation. So um, you are muted and you'll be able to do a Q&A for you, the Q&A option. So enjoy your presentation. Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jennifer Isaac, and I'm an Associate Director here in the Office of Admissions. And I am the primary admissions representative for the greater Pittsburgh area and almost the rest of Pennsylvania with the exception of the Philadelphia metro area. My colleague Jake Dietrich covers that territory. Uh, unfortunately, he's not able to join me today, but glad uh, that you all are here with us. I have a uh, somewhat short or maybe not so short PowerPoint presentation just to walk through and also a very short video uh, because obviously I know uh, you students have not had the opportunity to visit many campuses over the last uh, six, eight months due to COVID. So I'm guessing that many of you uh, have not had the chance to visit campus. So I want to give you the opportunity to see a little bit more. So let me just start first of all by sharing, uh, getting started with the PowerPoint here. And uh, so again, my name is Jennifer Isaac. I put my email right there at the top so that if you do have any questions after today, please do let me know. Uh, feel free to reach out to me at any point. Also at the end of uh, my presentation, with a, just an overview of Syracuse as far as academics, a little bit on campus life, and just some information about applying. Um, at the end, I will go back to the Q&A uh, box to see what questions you might have. So as we go through today, feel free to type in questions and I'll certainly get to those uh, at the end. Uh, but first of all, I have a nice uh, picture of campus. Uh, great time of year. This is actually a picture from last year. So if you look closely, you'll see students aren't wearing masks, but this is a picture from last year. The other thing uh, that would key you off to this picture being an older photo is uh, the roof of that dome building in the back left corner. That's our dome stadium. Uh, that just went under an, a really large uh, roof renovation project. So the roof looks different and you'll get to see that in the video. But this is one of my favorite times of the year on campus when all the trees are changing and it's so pretty. But um, I'll try to describe campus a little bit more as we go along. So I'm going to try and attempt to get the video um, right now and see if we can just show that quickly so you can get a quick idea of what that looks like. So let me go ahead and get that started. Oops, let me start from the beginning, sorry. session here. All right, so first of all, I want to make sure everybody knows where Syracuse University is located. I know a lot of times people think that we're closer to New York City than we are. Uh, we're actually about a four hour drive, but we're just about maybe about a four hour drive from the Philly metro area and about a six hour drive from the Pittsburgh area. So not too far away. Uh, obviously, we border Pennsylvania. And 
we have students from all over the country and all over the world. So that's uh, one of the benefits of going to a little bit larger university is just being able to live and study with a large uh, diverse student population. Uh, we have about 15,000 undergraduate students on campus. And as you can see from the map, again, our students are coming from uh, not only all across the US, but all around the world. And a lot of times people also think that we're a large state school and that most of our students are coming from New York State, but we are a private institution and more than half of our students come from outside of New York State. Uh, typically every year, just under 30% of our students are coming from New York. So most of our students are coming from outside of the state. So here's another picture of what campus looks like. And again, great time of year with all the fall foliage and so many different colors, not only on campus, but also in the surrounding area. And we are a residential campus. Uh, we are in the city of Syracuse, certainly not the size of a Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, but it is a small metropolitan area. There's about 160,000 people in the city of Syracuse. And the campus itself is not right in the middle of downtown. So students often feel that they have the best of both worlds. You have somewhat of an urban environment, but you still have a very traditional college campus setting, a lot of green space, as you can see here in the picture, and a lot of places just to hang out uh, in between classes, um, outside. And it's also a very manageable campus, very easy to navigate and walk around. Anything that you would possibly need to get to, whether it's your class, to the library, uh, back to your residence hall, going to an event in the Dome Stadium, everything is within walking distance. So very easy to get around. Um, it's not the case where we're spread out and you have to take a shuttle back and forth to anywhere you need to go, but you would walk. So very easy to navigate. Um, also taking a look at the picture here. Uh, first of all, we were founded in 1870. So we just celebrated our 150th birthday this past March. And we, our architecture is a unique blend of old and new. So you can see across the front of the picture, a lot of our old original buildings, and that's called Old Row. Uh, so some really unique uh, structures and architecture, but a lot of new buildings too. So kind of in the front uh, bottom corner, bottom left corner, you'll see uh, the third building to our new house school of public communications. So that uh, is one of our newer buildings on campus. So you'll have, again, a bit of a blend of the old and the new. And yes, we do experience all four seasons here at Syracuse. And so here's a shot of what it looks like more like late summer starting into the fall and then a winter shot. And yes, we do get snow here. Uh, it's also very manageable. Uh, we have a great physical plant crew that um, make sure all the sidewalks, things are clear for students to get back and forth to class. We do not uh, cancel classes due to the weather. Uh, life goes on. It's just part of our daily routine in the winter. But the other part I love about this picture is that it gives you a kind of a view of the surrounding area. A lot of rolling hills and valleys and we're right on the edge of the Finger Lakes region. Once you get outside of the city, it is uh, very rural, a lot of farm country, great places for outdoor activity. And our students are able to take advantage of some of those things uh, while they're at Syracuse. So if you like things like hiking, um, snowboarding, skiing uh, this time of year, it's a little bit more limited this year because of COVID, but uh, we'll have trips to go like to some local apple orchards or pumpkin picking. So there are things to do, you know, off campus in the surrounding area as well. But first, I do want to talk about academics. And first, you should know you have a lot to choose from when it comes to your academic education. And the university is comprised of our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges, which you'll see listed here. So when you apply to Syracuse, you do apply directly to your school or college of interest. Um, some of them you can put an intended major, or as you'll see the ones with the orange asterisks, you can apply to as undecided. In most areas, you have until the end of your second year before you have to officially declare your major. So in most areas, you have some time to figure it out, have some time to explore. And uh, also note that Syracuse is a place we're recognized for a lot of different academic areas. Um, it's not the case if you change your mind that you're not going to have a good program or another good opportunity. 
in Syracuse, but uh, you'll find that we do have many strong programs across campus. And once you do uh, enroll at Syracuse and you're enrolled into your college, that becomes your initial home college. And um, that's typically where you will declare your major. It's one of the first ways to really break down the larger university into a smaller classroom or a smaller college setting, I should say. So you have the opportunity to get to know your professors, um, really get to know many of your peers within your home college, but you'll still have access to the major uh, campus and it's where one of the larger uh, research institutions, or I should say a larger research institution and over 200 academic programs all together, over 100 different minors, and you really have the flexibility to customize uh, your academic experience, not only by your classes, but also what you're doing you know, outside of the classroom to continue your learning, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But one thing you should know is even though you are housed in one college, or perhaps maybe you've uh, enrolled in a dual program, which means you're housed in two colleges completing two majors, but many of our students do complete two majors or a combination of a major and a minor. That's probably more common um, and that does not have to have to happen all within one college. So you can take classes in other areas. Um, you can pursue a second area of study in another college while you're at Syracuse and we would encourage you to do that uh, if you have that interest. And you'll also find that there's a lot of options for interdisciplinary work. So maybe some classes that you're taking will uh, require you to maybe do a project that might involve a professor or maybe another student in another area of study across campus. Also, as I mentioned before, just really having that smaller college feel. I think one of the other misperceptions that people have about Syracuse and you know, a lot of times other larger universities is that you're just going to be in large lectures um, most of your time. And that's not the case. Uh, for the most part, you will have smaller classroom settings. Uh, majority of our classes are 30 or fewer. You can see average class size across campus is 26 students. So you will certainly have a lot of those smaller classroom settings. Um, also, from day one, you will start working not only with your advisor in your home college, but each school and college has also a career development office and staff. And we really take that integrated approach to both academic and career advising, starting from day one uh, when you're at Syracuse. So making sure along your years that you're staying on top of all your academic requirements, what you need to complete uh, your major program, and also working with you to find out what might be a complementary minor that you would want to pursue. And a lot of times that doesn't maybe happen until you know after your second year, uh, as students are starting to think about a particular career path. Um, there's so many different directions that you can go as far as your major and how you kind of customize that again to what you want to do as far as a career. So students you know in the same major don't always necessarily have that same path they'll still have the same requirements but you can kind of take different tracks so that it's more tailored to what you eventually want to do after graduation so working with your advisor to figure out you know, what else could you maybe look towards academically as far as your coursework but also what are maybe some um, research opportunities, what are some opportunities for some experiential uh -huh. learning that you could do, uh, what about some opportunities that might allow you to do some job shadowing, when are you going to fit in those internships, start using some of the resources in our career advising offices, you know, looking for when recruiters are coming to campus, when are some of the larger career fairs, when are career uh, fair opportunities happening for your home college. So trying to find out, you know, what have students done before you, how to apply for those internships, working with an advisor on your resume, maybe preparing for an interview. But um, many of our programs do require at least one internship. Uh, as you can see here, we've had students uh, intern at many different places or go on to careers at many different places. And also just making sure that you're building your resume as during your time at Syracuse and staying on top of that. We are a Research One University, so many of our faculty, uh, graduate as well as undergraduate students do get involved in research. 
and one of our main offices on campus called The Source, which is a Syracuse University Office for Undergraduate Research and Creative Engagement. Um, each year that office is funded with about a million dollars that can be awarded to students in the form of grants uh, for some of these experiences. So that's a great opportunity that you would have. Also a lot of opportunities for students to kind of test their ideas, um, things like uh, we have our um, like new business incubation hubs, opportunities for TED Talks. Uh, in our College of Engineering and Computer Science, we have a flight simulator. So there's a lot of different ways that you can really get some hands-on exposure and kind of test some of your ideas and learnings. Um, but again, that doesn't always have to happen um, just maybe within your home college. And you will find students in all of our schools and colleges that will have these experiences. Uh, just one point uh, on this slide here, the one picture, the two students uh, on the left side, uh, Nikita and Brianna, uh, one student is a student at our Falk College studying public health. Uh, the other is a student in our Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. Uh, who is studying economics and they had an idea. Um, they were very interested in helping to reduce waterborne illness in India. So they came up with an idea and a prototype for a sari, a garment that would have uh, pockets in it with water filtration system built in. And so that's something that they started putting together and sort of pitching their idea um, and getting some funding uh, for that. So again, just to, just an example of two students in two different areas that came together um, and collaborated on a particular idea and then applied uh, for a grant and received some funding to put that into action. Also, I would hope that many of you students have an interest in studying abroad. About half of our students do, and it's just another way for you to um, get some global exposure and really learn from other cultures and have an experience off of campus. And I would say it's probably one of the most rewarding experiences that you could have as a college student and so many opportunities for that at Syracuse. We do have one of the oldest international and most well recognized study abroad programs in the country. We have five centers that we operate Plus we have world partners in about 60 other countries. So plenty of places uh, where you can study. Most common I would say is a semester abroad, but we do have some short-term experiences, some summer programs. So there's uh, so many ways that you can fit that in, but any student in any program would have the opportunity to study overseas if that's of interest. Also, uh, it's not out of the country, but we do have some opportunities off campus. Uh, we have centers in New York City. Jennifer, sorry to interrupt you. Can you Oops. hear me? Yeah, I can. Your presentation's not sharing. Oh, goodness. Sorry, I tried to get in a little bit earlier and it, it didn't seem that you heard me there. So I did some questions not. Come oh, across I'm so sorry. Bottom. Yeah, no problem. So just wanted to give you a heads up. Thank you. That, and let me come back. Okay, is that better? <laughs> All right, so sorry about that, um, that I missed that. So I'm just going to, I think, let's see, let me pick back up. Um, just finished talking about study abroad, and then let me finish, okay. So the one thing I was just mentioning, uh, we do have uh, three centers that are allow students opportunities to study off campus, but still within the US. So we have centers in New York City, also Washington DC and uh, Los Angeles. So students in programs such as any areas like within film, television, uh, the media, music industry, architecture, um, in our School of Public Communications, also some programs with College of Visual and Performing Arts, uh, a lot of our social sciences programs uh, have the opportunity for the Maxwell semester in Washington, DC. So you do have uh, some other opportunities potentially to study off campus, but um, not having to go out of the country. And outside of the classroom and your academic experience, we would also hope that you would get involved in the campus community. 
it's one of the best ways to be able to meet students, uh, more students in other areas across campus, do something that you've always enjoyed doing in high school, but then also uh, maybe trying something new, maybe getting involved in a professional organization that will also help build your resume. And we have over 300 different clubs and student organizations to get involved with. And there's always something going on across campus. Our students are definitely very active. Um, they enjoy taking advantage of things that will happen on campus. Um, so just a few things to uh, point out. So first of all, a lot of great speakers that come to campus. We had Trevor Noah recently. We did a shared university reading of his book, but then uh, he came and spoke at our Martin Luther King event. And then community service, a lot of our students do get involved in the local community. We have a great um, local student organization that partners with our local Habitat for Humanity. We often do a shackathon on the main quad. Uh, students build small little houses and then we'll live there over the weekend uh, to raise awareness for homelessness and building affordable housing. Uh, picture of Otto the Orange uh, with some students in our Tenity Ice Pavilion. Uh, that's uh, just about a mile down the road on our south campus and students uh, can definitely go there to skate, but also we do a lot of fun events there as well. Acapella groups, those are very popular uh, with our student groups and a lot of the other student performing groups that uh, will offer performances throughout the year and opportunities to get involved, but also our Orange After Dark program and Recreation Services partner to provide different events and things that will happen um, on the weekends that students can do both on campus and off campus. So again, there's always something going on. Um, I know I talked about our Dome Stadium earlier. Not only does that house a lot of uh, the major sporting events, but that's where you know, we'll also maybe have some concerts, um, different um, events throughout the year. Some of our guest speakers might come there as well. So it's, uh, again, a lot of things always happening on campus. The other new uh, building that we have, I just wanted to point out, is our barn center at the Arch. And this building just opened. Uh, last fall, so it's about a year old now, and it really is kind of a one-stop shop. Um, all of our health, wellness, uh, facilities and resources kind of under one roof, and it's right off of the main quad, right next to the dome, so very convenient for students to get to, but uh, got a lot of student feedback and did a lot of research over recent years and found that it was just helpful uh, to have all of these, again, resources and facilities under one roof to take the best approach to supporting our students and being successful during their time at Syracuse. And so things like our um, health centers there, the student pharmacy, all of our counseling offices, um, any type of uh, fitness facility or room that you could possibly think of. Uh, we have our mind spa there, uh, we have a pet therapy room. And we have a four story climbing wall as well and a great juice bar. So that uh, has quickly become one of the most popular uh, spots on campus. The other thing that's under construction right now is a major renovation of our main student center. So that will be opening this coming spring and it's completely been regutted, redesigned, and really took a lot of ideas from our students uh, through surveys, through meeting with our students to incorporate in that new design plan. So uh, learning you know, what they wanted from a student center, how would they most use it, and what type of, um, even down to the furniture, uh, would be most useful for them. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, that will be opening hopefully in January. And as far as living on campus, as I mentioned before, uh, we are a residential campus. About 70% of our students do live in university housing. And uh, one of the options as a first year student that you have is being part of a living learning community. So the first two years you are required to live in university housing. After that, it is optional. But uh, for the first year, we have just about 25 uh, living learning communities. They typically make up a floor in one of our residence halls. So they're not separate buildings, but students on that floor would have that same common interest. Uh, again, these are completely optional, but some of them are uh, 
more based around a particular college or a group of similar majors. So for example, we have a STEM learning community in Shaw Hall and students there might take some classes together, will have study groups together, may have a professor come in and talk to that community. Some are more just outside interest based so that you might have an interest in say leadership or community involvement or a multicultural living a learning community. So there are many options for you if that might be of interest. And if you attend Syracuse, once you graduate, you'll be part of our orange uh, family and you'll be forever orange. And we have over a quarter million alumni around the world. So there's always a connection, an orange connection that you'll be able to make. But you'll find that making connections with our alumni a lot of students, that's kind of maybe their first uh, internship opportunity, maybe getting their foot in the door for an interview or some type of networking uh, opportunity upon graduation. But they're here for you as a great support system. Uh, many of our alumni have signed up to be in our career databases to be able to you know, see what alumni are out there in your particular field, maybe connecting with them to get some advice. And many of our alumni uh, come back to campus uh, throughout the year to speak to our students or speak to a class. So once uh, you become orange, you'll be forever orange. So if you decide to apply to Syracuse, just a couple things uh, that you should keep in mind as far as the application. Uh, first of all, you hopefully know we are using the common application and you have two options. We have early decision and regular decision. So those are the two options that you have. And then also you hopefully you've learned that this year we have made the decision to go test optional uh, like many other institutions out there. And so if you decide you don't have the opportunity to submit scores or wish to not submit scores, that's entirely up to you. But as always, we typically do take a very holistic process when it comes to reviewing applications. Uh, we're not just looking at your grades, but we're looking at everything else in the application. We really want to know a little bit more about you and how you might contribute to our campus environment. And so looking at those uh, recommendations, looking at your counselor evaluation, uh, looking to see what you've been involved with over the years. And do know, we understand over the last several months, uh, you probably haven't had the same involvement that you have in the past or hope to have this year. We get that, uh, so we completely understand that. Um, so don't be too concerned there. Also know uh, for seniors, we do have uh, the option to have a personal interview as part of the application process. That's something that can be done before or after submitting an application. And again, that's optional. They are all virtual this year, but it is another way for us to be able to meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, uh, allows you to personalize your application a bit further and be able to ask questions um, and try to you know, decide, is Syracuse a good fit for you? Also, we are committed to making Syracuse education affordable for you. So not only um, making sure that you apply for need-based aid, uh, we do require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile um, as part of your aid applications and Last year, about 80% of our students did receive some form of financial support, and that totaled just over $400 million, and uh, more than $200 million of that did come through SU grants and scholarships. So for that side, um, that's why we do need that uh, CSS profile for consideration there. Also, um, all applicants are considered for merit-based awards and those you do not have to apply for. We base those on your application for admission, or I should say in of the information that's provided in your application for admission. So just to recap, um, probably talked a little bit longer. I'm gonna flip back in my slides to go back to some of the campus shots from the beginning um, since I, sorry, I did not realize I didn't have my uh, screen share going, but I'll flip back to that. But overall, academically, 
Again, you have a lot to choose from, over 200 academic programs, ways to really customize your academic path and taking classes from all across uh, the university and just being able to have access to everything a major R1 research institution is able to offer. And also outside of the classroom, you still have plenty to choose from uh, between the many clubs and student organizations to all the things that happen across campus throughout the year. So let me just flip back here. Uh, whoops. Breeze through those pretty quickly. So again, just wanted to show you <laughs> back to a couple of those pictures from campus and uh, thankfully I did get the video in there as far as I know, um, but just wanted to also show a couple more pictures there. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing so that I can get into the Q&A. So if you haven't already and you have questions, please feel free to type those into the Q&A box and I'll be happy uh, to answer any questions that you have. So as I'm waiting for just a couple uh, to see if anyone has any questions, a couple other things. I know a lot of times uh, students ask, well, first of all, can I have a car on campus my first year? Um, unfortunately not. Uh, parking is very limited on campus, but as I mentioned earlier, you really don't need a car, uh, your, especially your first year. Everything is within walking distance and easy to get around. Um, even going downtown, uh, very, you could walk downtown. A lot of students will choose to take one of, um, we have what's called the uh, connective corridor bus that will go down and that comes through campus. It's free for students. Uh, some great places to go in the city, places like Armory Square, Clinton Square, uh, some really good restaurants and shops, uh, fun places to hang out on the weekends. We also have a few theaters downtown. One has a Broadway series that comes through every year. A lot of these things that happen even in downtown Syracuse, whether it might be a movie premiere or um, a theater, a show at a theater, uh, or some type of other event, uh, students will have the opportunity to purchase uh, tickets at a student discount. So you can get some really good prices on those, but you can get those right through our student center box office. Uh, we also have minor league hockey. We do have minor league baseball. Uh, so there's certainly a lot of things to do downtown throughout the year. Oh, let me see, I've got a question here. Ah, okay, so the question is, I'm looking to study in sports media and broadcasting. Research has shown that Syracuse is one of the best in the field. How competitive is it to earn a place in the college? So um, anything related to public communications, like broadcasting, journalism, uh, those programs are all housed, as you probably know, in our new house school of public communications. And uh, we don't have a specific like, sports broadcasting, but within our broadcast and digital, digital journalism program, um, students can take a track uh, in sports. And some really great opportunities there. Uh, first of all, we have a television station like Citrus TV. We have WAER radio, so places like you know, that's where like Sean McDonough, Mike Tirico, and so many others uh, kind of got their start. Um, but those, th those are types of things that are available to students again, starting your first year. Um, so the Newhouse School, as I mentioned before, you do apply directly to a school or college. Uh, Newhouse does tend to be one of our more selective colleges for admission. And that's really because of number one, the volume of applications that we typically receive, but then also, um, just the quality of the pool it tends to be one of our strongest pools of applicants um, by college that we tend to receive. So uh, it is a little bit more selective um, than some of our, than admission to some of our other colleges for those two reasons. But don't let that hold you back at all. Um, as I mentioned before, one of the things that you might consider, um, Nolan, if you are a senior, is having a personal interview. 
uh, to go along with your application. So if you're not a senior yet, don't worry about that at this time, but if you are a senior, that might be something you would want to consider. Good question. Still have about 10 minutes, so I just want to make sure of any other questions that you have. As I mentioned before, after today's session, if you think of anything, you can feel free to contact me. Also, we are hosting a bunch of uh, virtual sessions throughout the rest of the fall, uh, not only just general information sessions, but um, like our many of our students that are part of our University 100 uh, student ambassador group, they're doing live sessions um, throughout the fall, one or two days per week. So if you wanna just have an opportunity to log in, connect with uh, some current students, that's a great recommendation that I have for you. Also, each of our schools and colleges have weekly information sessions. So if you wanted to find out a bit more about your particular academic area of interest, um, also many of them also have current students that are offering those connections. Uh, we will be having some um, themed sessions over the next several weeks. We've already had a few, but um, we have some coming up um, we have one with our Office of Multicultural Affairs. We also have one coming up um, with some of our faith-based organizations and with our chaplain at Hendricks Chapel to talk about faith and community on campus. Uh, we have, we just finished up one that was related to students that were interested in um, communications and writing and journalism. Uh, so there will be some themed sessions that will be happening um, throughout the rest of the fall too. So keep an eye on our website and you'll probably uh, receive emails from us as well. Checking to see if any other questions. I know the other question that we've been getting a lot as far as applying and notification and what those timelines are uh, for early decisions. We typically uh, let students know by January 1st. So that um, allows you to get that decision much earlier. And then for our regular decision applicants, we usually begin notifying around uh, mid to late March. Trying to, whoops, back there. Oh, I thought I saw another question, but no, that's right. Well, if there are no other questions, uh, I thank you again for coming out and joining me today. I do apologize for the missing the first part of my slideshow there, but Hopefully the rest of the information was helpful to you. And I, oh, I have one more question coming in. Uh, when in when are pre-screens for musical theater uh, now? <laughs> so uh, depends on whether you're applying for early decision or regular decision, uh, but you want to get that in. I believe the um, first the deadline for early decision I believe has already passed. Um, but for regular decision, I believe that is November 1st, um, but you can find that information on the website. I would encourage you to submit your pre-screen before you apply. Uh, once you submit your pre-screen, uh, after the College of Visual and Performing Arts reviews that, they will follow up with you to let you know if you passed and if they invite you to proceed through the full audition and applying for that program um, or 
it is possible that you may hear back and they may encourage you um, to consider another opportunity at Syracuse. So that's why we always uh, try to encourage students to hold on submitting their application, you know, those for those who are applying for musical theater or acting um, until you get your pre-screen results. Uh, so that way, um, if that's your only interest, you wouldn't have to worry about you know, spending the money to submit another uh, application to us. Very good question. But if you go on to the College of Visual and Performing Arts uh, website, you will be able to see all of the uh, dates and requirements for the pre-screen as well as the full audition. Well, thank you all very much. And I wish you all the best for the rest of your school year. And hopefully you'll have a chance to uh, be able to attend one of our virtual sessions if you haven't already. And enjoy the weekend. I can't believe it's Friday already, but hope you have a great weekend and just be in touch if we can be of assistance. Thank you so much and go Orange. All right. Oh, she's gone. Never mind. All right. Never mind. It's all good.